Hello everyone and welcome to this course on modern application development. Now the last part about this uh, session on databases right relates to so called security right and this is also relevant to the construction of an app itself right. Now in the context of an application right you ultimately are querying something from a database right and if this was a so called non MVC app because after all remember MVC is only a uh, guideline right it is not enforced it is not that you can only build web applications with the MVC framework you could just as well have a PHP script which you know directly queries from a database and draws something on the screen. You could have SQL queries anywhere in MVC of course you know ideally you want it the uh, the SQL well comes not directly even in the controller it is only in the model. So, the controller sends the queries constructs the queries and sends them to the model and the model is the part that actually handles communicating with the database. So, if at all there is SQL involved it is going to be only in the model part ok not really even in the controller section. So, the question becomes what is dangerous about an SQL query right. So, let us take an example right this is what a typical HTML form could look like right basically you have input for name and input for password it would get rendered something like you know what is shown out here ok. Which means that finally, you would go and you would type some information for the username you would type some information for the password and either hit enter or you know there would be a submit button that you click on ok. What happens once that is done is that you would typically have some code inside your script let us say you are using python you might you know take form dot request of name form dot request sorry this should be password right and you are going to construct a query out of it ok. Now, let us say that your query was just being done by you know stringing things together ok use the python plus operator and just you know concatenate strings seems like a reasonable thing to do potentially very bad why because you have just directly taken whatever was sent in through the form right and you have put it into an SQL query ok. Now, who has access to the form pretty much anyone who has access to that website right not just that you even cannot be sure that someone actually went to the form and typed it in they might even just construct an HTTP query directly using curl or something like that and send it to your server. The server has no way of knowing what the client was actually doing right that is the whole point of the HTTP stateless uh, condition right. So, now what happens if I just type in ABCD and you know let us say I had put in pass over here for the password right it would basically do select star from users where name equal to ABCD pass equal to pass right just interpolate both of those perfect nice safe query ok. But what happens if I actually typed in some stuff like this right double quotes or double quote double quote equal to double quote right it looks messy why am I even typing something like this. But look at what happened right I have now got a query which says sele select star from users where name equal to blank or blank and pass equal to blank or blank ok. What does this name equal to blank or blank mean it basically effectively resolves into a null condition because it is not even going to look for the name ok and what will end up doing is just selecting star from users ok and so blank or blank will basically just this part of it will just you know turn out into one true statement and that is it. So, you know you would end up getting all the entries from the database ok. So, the result is that you have leaked information right basically something which was supposed to be in the database which someone else was not supposed to be able to see has come out as a result of this query. Now, even worse is let us say that you know you did not even have the sort of single quotes and so on over here you just straight away do name equal to this plus name ok. What happens if I give an input like this right within my box over here I basically say a semicolon drop table users semicolon ok. What is the query that is constructed select star from users where name equal to a drop table users they are select separated by the semicolon they will be treated as two separate SQL queries and both will run result is total destruction of your data ok. 
what was the problem? The problem was that this name, this parameter came in from outside and you did not validate it. You did not sort of check in any way whether it had, you know, these extra characters, all these semicolons, they were the root of the problem, right? That's what allowed somebody to construct two queries like this. And as a result of that, it just basically constructed something which should not have been possible. Now, the parameters from the HTML were taken without validation and validation should you know go through multiple things, right? I mean, it should basically check first of all, are they valid text data? No special characters or other symbols. For in particular, you know, nothing like semicolons or quotation marks, right? They should not be there. Or if they are, they have to be sort of escaped out into something which, you know, looks sufficiently different that the SQL query will not get confused. You don't want any punctuation or other kinds of invalid input, right? And you could also have an extra level of validation which actually checks, right? I mean, let's say that it's supposed to be an email. Does it look like an email, right? Does it have one front part, an at symbol, and something which looks like a domain name after it? If it's supposed to be a date, does it look like a date, okay? So all of this validation must be done just before the database query, okay? What do I mean by that? You have to be very careful that you do not assume that just because you have, let's say, you know, a web page which is behind some secure firewall or whatever it is, and you know, you have told people to enter the correct information, that the data you get will be correct because somebody might still figure out a way to send a query directly to your server without going through the form that you created. Okay? And as we will see later, you might have JavaScript which is being used for validation, right? But let's say that the person has directly constructed the query, they're just going to bypass the JavaScript altogether and create a query that comes into your server and destroys data on it, and you have no way of stopping it, okay? So web application security, in other words, needs, I mean, you know, can have a lot of different variants. In fact, this is probably the subject of a course in itself, right? What I described over here is what is called SQL injection. Right, where you are basically trying to inject some invalid or bad constructs into the SQL query. The best way to get around it is to use known frameworks and good solid validation that has been provided usually and you know, that has been tested in the field. Right? You might write your own validation, but there's always the chance that you have missed something out. Okay? So it's better, that is one of the chief reasons for using known frameworks. Right? Even though you feel that you might know what kind of problems are there, there might be something else that gets discovered. It will get fixed in the frameworks first because a lot of people are using them. Okay, And you might miss it and not really be able to accommodate it in your app. There are other things called buffer overflows and input overflows, which are basically related to the length of the query, the URL and so on, right? which can sometimes even crash different clients. So specific types of clients might crash because of this or specific types of servers might crash. Okay. What happens to the protocol implementations of servers, right? I mean, are they able to accept any kind of query? You know, what happens if I inject some unknown characters into the middle of a query, right? Uh, into the middle of a request which is being sent to a HTTP server, right? And one thing actually that I've not mentioned here, remember the character set and you know all the encodings that are used right the reason why we have character sets is of course so that we can use different languages like let's say hindi or tamil right but the problem is i can also have different characters or different entries from different character sets that look very similar to things that i'm already familiar with but which can actually end up crashing a server okay so all that validation has to be done right at the last step before it hits the database right so that you are sure that only valid data is going to get inside the database. Possible outcomes can be serious, right? I mean, you can lose data, you can expose sensitive data, or you can even change data without knowing it, okay? And all of these are potentially deadly to whoever is running the app, right? Because let's say that you are, you know, uh, even leaking, let's say, credit card information or changing, right, the date of birth of a person, all of those can have very drastic effects on other things that you may not even think about at the time. Now, a word about HTTPS, literally, you know, this is, I'm not really spending too much time on it because at this 
point in time pretty much HTTPS is something which you should think of as automatically pretty much you know anything any app should use or any web server should pretty much use HTTPS. And the reason for that is all that it does is let us say that you have a server and you have a client there is this pipe of data which is flowing between them right the server can uh, the client can send requests to the server the server sends back responses to the client you can think of it as a pipe with data flowing across it now in pure http a third party can tap into this right somewhere it could literally be you know putting a tap on the wire right or it might be that you know it's passing through some intermediate router and i'm able to look at it in one of the routers the packets are there and i just basically reassemble the packets at one end and see the data going back and forth which means that a person who's tapping over here can see all the information going between server and client what https does is it provides something called a secure socket layer right which essentially says that this tap becomes impossible Okay, mathematically impossible at least mathematically very very hard to do that's probably the right way to put it okay and effectively what it's saying is that you know once https with the right kind of protocols right kind of servers right kind of clients is in place it is now extremely difficult for a third party to tap into this and be able to know what is the communication happening between the client and the server okay there can be instances where you don't care about it but by default, pretty much it's usually safer to assume that HTTPS is the better way to go, right? Because the moment you have anything right down to, you know, something like a password, it has to be kept safe, right? And in fact, nowadays you will notice that you, even browsers have extensions or variants called HTTPS everywhere, which tries to, you know, switch you over to an HTTPS version of any website, right? Because the assumption is that by default you should not be sort of using plain http even by accident you don't want to be leaking information right how does https work there's a lot of theory behind it right and the important thing is there is something called a server certificate which is you know what results in that small green sign on the url bar right and that server certificate has been essentially verified by some third party who is trusted both by the server and by you by you meaning whoever created your operating system okay very difficult to spoof based on mathematical properties which ensure very very low probabilities of accidental mismatches or something okay but the important thing to remember over here is that it only secures the link for a data transfer it does nothing about the data which is going through so in particular it does not perform validation safety checks nothing of that sort all that you can say is nobody can tap into your information they can still feed you junk okay one problem with https is that you know previously when plain text data was being sent back and forth intermediate proxies could sit over there and say oh you know this is what you're asking for here i have it let me give you back the data now the intermediate proxy by definition cannot see what's inside the request that you are sending so it can't send you back information even if it has it okay so it has a pretty big negative impact on the cacheability of resources like static files okay and also some overhead on performance itself okay so to summarize this part on security internet and web security are complex beasts okay they are pretty much enough for a course in themselves and right now as an application developer the main thing that you should be thinking about it is as far as possible use known frameworks with trusted track records but also be aware of where your application is going to run right are you running it on your own server or are you running it on something like google app engine if it's something like app engine you're slightly better off because they are taking care of all the problems of running the server maintaining the security patches on the server preventing things like buffer overflows and things of that sort so you have to concentrate only on your own validation so that your database doesn't get messed up okay so as an app developer in other words you should be aware of all possible problems that arise from the code that you have written but also need to be aware of problems at other levels of the stack right and by stack what i mean is your application is finally running on top of 
you know some kind of a server or language interpreter which is running on an operating system which is running on some kind of hardware which is running in a data center right so there are many many different stages before your clients right or users actually hit the application that you have written okay so at this point the main thing to keep in mind is there are such things as sql injection and various other kinds of attacks that you need to be aware of and make sure that you know can't happen in the code that you write but the rest of it is also something that you need to keep an eye on you need to know where you are running your application so that it is actually going to be safe